So the last question is, how can we as the public get involved with your campaign? I say oh, well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, so um, I don't know what to tell you who to vote for. Uh, that's, a decision, <laughs> that's a decision you had to make. But be smart. And the problem is that I'm talking to you. If you came here today, it's because you have an incline that you wanted to talk about HIV and whatever. So you know what? I'm wasting my time. What I need is you to talk to the rest of the people. Uh, I need you to explain to others why Canada uh, has to move in the direction that traditionally uh, uh, subjugated me, uh, that fascinated me when I first came to this country. Uh, this was a country that, as an Argentinian traveling through the Patagonia, I can tell you, uh, if I had a, a, a guy from the UK, I had a, an American, and I had a Canadian, I would go and find my way to the Canadian because I wanted to hang ar around with those guys. They were cool. They were great. They were fantastic. They were fun. They, they, and they were pleasant to be hang around with as opposed to the loud Americans and the British, which I didn't understand what they were talking about anyways. Uh, and, that's, and that's before the Falklands War. Uh, <laughs> imagine, imagine after. Duly noted. So, so – the, you know, we need to go back to our, the, our Canadian roots, to go back to what we used to be, to, to, to be a beacon of uh, sensibility, a, a, a vision for the future. Uh, as it is, uh, I, don't, I don't understand it. This is not the Canadian identity. Uh, we need to make these people understand that we want a caring attitude for our people and for the rest of the world. And you, actually, you need to help us. Canada will be hosting the G8 next summer. And Mr. Harper will host it. As the host of the G8, Mr. Harper will have the prerogative to set in the agenda for the G8. And guess what? AIDS is not in the agenda. Why? Because he doesn't get it. He doesn't think this is important. So we need to send a message, but not just you. You need to make a pledge that you're going to contact a dozen friends who are going to contact a dozen friends, and you're going to write and write and write until they finally get it. But we need to do that. We are very concerned. The, the role of antiretroviral therapy uh, in Africa and the rest of the uh, resource-limited settings in the world has been an incredible success. We've gone from nothing to 4 million people on antiretroviral therapy. We saved 4 million lives uh, in the last, uh, since 2002. So in the last few years, this is dramatic. This is fantastic. The problem is that we were supposed to have at least 8 million, if not 12 million, by 2010 and we're nowhere near. Uh, now we have a different understanding of what antiretroviral therapy can do, so we need to get another 20 million people on antiretroviral therapy. And it's not because I like it or I get a, a commission by the pharmaceutical industry. It's because if we don't do that, there will be more children born with HIV, and to be honest with you, that may not matter that much because they'll die and this, that's the end of the equation. But there will be more parents infected with HIV. That means that there will be more orphans. The orphans will become uh, uh, abandoned because the society cannot accommodate them. Those children, they are the prostitute themselves or, or, or they're going to be vectors of HIV transmission because they have to prostitute themselves. Uh, the, uh, in, in Africa alone, 20 to 30 percent of the healthcare force, nurses, doctors, and the like, are HIV infected. In a society that needs the doctors and the nurses more than anybody else, uh, AIDS is killing them. Among the minors, 60%, 60% are HIV infected. In fact, no, 60% have died because of HIV. Uh, and many more are, are infected with HIV. The, what happens is that because they are, they are migrants, they are migrant minors, they don't have wives or friends or whatever, so they, you know, they, 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 they become engaged with prostitution. And so the rates of HIV are huge. If we don't stop all of that, the, the, the economy of South Africa and the rest of the African economy will continue to collapse. Colin Powell, uh, sorry, let me tell you more. Antiretroviral therapy has now been shown that not only it decreases death among people infected with HIV, transmission of HIV, but actually decreases tuberculosis rates in South Africa because people infected with HIV are susceptible to develop tuberculosis, so they don't develop tuberculosis. When that happens, their peers who are not HIV, they also have less tuberculosis. They, because there is less HIV, there is less malaria, when you treat with antiretroviral therapy. There is less orphanhood, there is, and so goes on and on and on and on. Um, Colin Powell. Colin Powell, Colin Powell uh, on the eve of 9-11, uh, went to Bush, Bush of all people, and told him, Mr. Bush, AIDS is the single biggest threat 
to human security, to global security. You need to do something about it. And Bush went, really? And he said, yes. Okay, okay, Colin, we'll do it then. And he established the PEPFAR program, the Prescient Emergency Program for African Relief, PEPFAR, the single most important initiative in the world to fund the treatment for people with HIV in Africa. And you know why they did it? It wasn't compassion. They did it because it's good for business. It's good for business, for Coca-Cola, but it's also because it was to save the money in terms of global security down the road. So this is a good investment. Now, Harper doesn't get it. Uh, we, we have asked Canada, when Tony Clement was the Minister of Health, when is Canada going to match the American contribution uh, uh, to the fight against HIV globally on a per capita basis? I said, no, sorry, we don't have enough money. Well, hell, they just increased the contribution to AIDS fight in the United States, and they are broke. And here we are, not even talking about it. So we need your help, and we're doing our part. We're driving him nuts, but it's not good enough. If there is no grassroots call for the G8 to embrace AIDS, it's not going to happen. And if it doesn't happen, this is going to be a catastrophe. So get your pens out <laughs> and get writing. Um, I'd like to invite all of you to come out and have some refreshments, and there's some cookies, and Dr. Montana will be around for a little bit to talk to you. And I apologize if I missed your question, but I, I thought it would be nice for the audience to be able to get up and walk around, and Dr. Montana is very happy to entertain Questions 101. Okay, thank you so much for coming, and I hope you'll also enjoy February, however it turns out. And uh, we'll see you back again in March. There's also a sheet that contains all of our talks. And please do uh, let your friends know uh, about this. And also, if they can't make it to view it on the podcast, it's on the Providence Healthcare uh, Department of Medicine website. Thank you very much. <laughs>